Okay, so I realize for many of you, this will seem like it's a legacy, archaic type of technology, but in this video, we're going to look at building installers for our Visual Studio projects. And yes, that's just a friendly reminder that not every single thing that's built is a web application. There are still tons of people building desktop applications as well. Hi, I'm Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. We're going to go through a simple tutorial here for getting set up to make an installer. I'll show you the very basics, but you're going to have to think about how you want to configure them for your own product install. If that sounds interesting, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, we're going to jump over to the Microsoft website to see where we can go download the project templates for this stuff. Okay, so I am on the Microsoft Learn Challenge website here where we have the download links. Uh, I am going to put a link to this in the description so you can follow along, but you can see that there is some information you can follow along with here. This is not my content. This is straight from Microsoft. So if you want to read through this and have a different perspective, you can absolutely follow along with that. What we're going to do, though, is go click this link where it says Visual Studio Installer Projects. Again, I will also have a link to this one. And that way, if they change this page or something like that, and the link is gone, then you'll still have access to it. If we click over, I guess I already had it open in a tab here. You can see that there's a download button. So I would start by pressing that. So if you're watching this and trying to follow along, press this, get the download going so you have it. And that way, as you're continuing to watch this, you have to pause it less. So I want to call out, though, that they have a couple of things down here that are worth noting. So it says the extension is designed to work with Visual Studio 2022. So if you are watching this in the future and it's Visual Studio 2030 or we're in the year 3000 or something like that, uh, this might not be the thing that you want to download. And they're also saying you can download a version of this extension compatible with the older Visual Studio versions here. Uh, I believe if you go get that download instead, you'll be fine to follow along with this tutorial still. We're going to be going over the basics of this stuff. Maybe there are some nuanced little differences here and there, but the general idea should still apply. So make sure you get this downloaded. You're going to want to make sure that Visual Studio is closed down as you're installing it. It will prompt you for that. So Visual Studio off, run the installer. It will get the project templates and the things that you need installed. And then you can restart Visual Studio. Once you have all that done, let's continue on. Okay, so jumping over to Visual Studio, we'll go ahead and make a new project just so we can see it all come together. You can see that right away I have set up project up at the top here. I'm actually going to start by making something different. We're going to make a WPF application, and that's going to be the first project in our solution, and then I'm going to add in the setup project after. If you already have a solution and you want to add a setup project, you can go ahead and open that one instead if you're just following along and you'll be able to go ahead and configure your setup project the same way that I'm going to do for a brand new application. So I'm just calling it out that I'm not opening an existing one. I'm going to just go ahead and make this here. Maybe uh, I'll go ahead and put this in my repository. Actually, I'll make sure that I have this committed to my repository. We're going to call it uh, installer tutorial. Uh, that's going to be the solution name. And then I'm going to have uh, WPF app is going to be the project name. So you'll notice my project name is not matching the solution name. And that's because I just want to make sure that the app itself is called out separately from the solution. And then we'll add the installer project in after. So go ahead and press next on that .NET framework. Uh, I guess I can go ahead and pick nine because that's out now. Go ahead and press the create button. Before we continue on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have courses available on Dome Train. If you're just getting started in your programming journey and you want to learn C Sharp, you can head over to Dome Train. I have a getting started in C Sharp course. It's approximately five hours of content taking you from absolutely no experience to being able to program in C Sharp. And after that, I have my deep dive course, which will take you to the next level with another six hours of content so that you can start building basic applications. Head over to Dome Train and check it out. Let's head back to the video. Again, this first step that we get here is just to have our application, right? So if I go ahead and run this, we just get a really simple application. If you already have one built and you're ready to go, that's awesome news. But you can see, boom, we have a little program running. Great news. But from there, we're going to go ahead and right click on our solution explorer. We're going to add and go to new project. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then we're going to pick setup project and press next. So then I'm going to have, um, we'll call it installer tutorial and we'll call it installer. So we'll have that in here as well. And boom, we get this thing popping up and we're like, okay, well, what now, right? Do we just have this installer? It's all done. 
not quite. There's a few things that you're going to want to make sure that you have set up. So if I were to just go ahead and build this, I just want to show you the default because I think that for my learning experiences, at least if you're like me, you want to try things out. The base case is interesting to go explore. So I just built it. It succeeded. If I go open the folder and we check out I'm in debug, you can see that it made an installer, right? So if I go to run setup, right? So we get this little uh, wizard. You can see that by default, installer tutorial.installer is the name of it. You see that popping up everywhere. Kind of ugly. You probably want to change the text for that. So we'll look at doing that. We can press next. You'll see where it's going to install. You see default company name uh, backslash installer tutorial. It's going to go into program files by default. We'll go ahead, press next, and then we can go ahead and start the installation. So if I were to go do this, it's going to go install. I don't necessarily want to, so I'll cancel that. Yes, I want to cancel and we get it stopped. So that's the default base case, but there's a couple things we want to consider. So the first thing we're going to want to think about, in my opinion, is going to be the dependencies, because if you're installing this on someone else's computer, what are they going to need? Well, the .NET framework. I picked .NET 9 when I was getting my app set up. So first of all, I want to go to right click on the project and go to properties. This is going to pop this window up. I want to go to prerequisites, and then you'll see in this big list of all of the .NET runtimes, I'm going to go ahead and pick .NET runtime x64. You can pick what you want to do here. So specify the install location. So download prerequisites from the component vendor's website from the same location as my application or from some other location. I'm just going to leave the default and press OK. Right. So now that's there. Something you should also check is because your installer, you're probably releasing in release mode is so I want to save the changes. Yes. But if I go to release now and check this out, just to double check, right? It's not checked here. So make sure that you're doing it here as well, because you might have a little bit of a crappy surprise if you have it all set up in debug and then you switch to actually release your installer in release mode and it's not the same. So we'll get that set up there and press apply. So just to double check in release mode, if I go to prereqs, boom, we see .NET 9 checked off. If I go back to the active debug, because that's what we're going to be using for the whole tutorial here, you can see that it's still checked off there. So we are good to go. You can pick different options here. So I'm going to have the files in the setup file itself. Compression, you can pick if you want to optimize for size or speed. So if size is important for you where you're hosting this, feel free to go reduce that. But at this point, this screen is probably pretty good. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is actually going to get installed right now? And the answer is, well, nothing. So we want to go right click on the application folder here and go to add. And then we're going to get a project output. So in here, I'm going to go pick from uh, the project drop down, it's already selected installer tutorial WPF app. If you're doing this on your own project, right? So you had something that was already created, you can go ahead and pick something else, whatever your project is, but you probably want to select the entry point to your application, right? So if you have a bunch of different DLLs and project files and stuff like that, that get copied into your application's bin directory when it's built pick the entry point because that stuff will show up there. I'm going to be picking publish items, but you may want to look through this and see if there's a different option that makes more sense for you, right? For me, I think that for the most part, publish items is almost always going to make sense. So configuration will also go to active. And then now if we look on the right hand side, we can see that if we go into application folder, we have that publish items thing. You can set up um, to create a shortcut here as well if you want. So you can go ahead and do that. So right click, create shortcut. And the same thing in the program menu, you can go ahead and add a shortcut as well. But otherwise, this is mostly what we need. If I were to go build this now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and run this. And I'm actually going to install it. We'll see where it goes. And we should see that we should be able to get something launched. So next. Uh, I'm actually going to copy and paste this whole path so I can get there pretty easy. We'll go install it. Okay, so it's been successfully installed. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to here. And you can see, amazingly, we have our WPF application installed. Now, what you should notice is that I have a PDB file in here. Probably not what you want to have. But remember, I built this in debug, right? So my current settings were for debug. 
That's probably why there's a PDB there, but these are the types of things you're going to want to check when you configure all of this stuff. So please, as you're going through this on your own, spot check this stuff. Don't just blindly try and follow along with this YouTube video and say, well, Nick said this, these are the default options. It's good. Please don't do that. Double check what you got going on. If I go run this now, though, boom, we get main window. Very exciting, I know. But again, double check what's being output here, especially if your application is more complex than just an empty WPF app. You're going to want to make sure if you have different configuration files or whatever other defaults, those get dropped in. Okay, so double check that. But now if we want to continue on with iterating with this, and spoiler alert, we do, we're going to have to uninstall it. Okay, so if you go to your programs and features, you should be able to go to see um, where this was installed. So if I search for installer and I get installer tutorial dot installer right away, I can go ahead and uninstall that. So we'll go watch that and you can see that folder got deleted right before our eyes, right? So I can't even get back to the company name. Uh, that folder is just completely gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. But before I do, I just wanted to mention that the next iteration I want to look at, I want to pretty up these things here. So I don't want default company name. There's no way I'm shipping software like that. And installer tutorial dot installer is a little bit weird. So maybe we can do something better there. So let's go ahead and close that and go back to Visual Studio. If we want to start making the installer path and installer look a little bit prettier and not have those funny strings everywhere, I'm going to go ahead and right click on installer tutorial dot installer, go to properties. And actually, it's not that. I need the properties window. So if I pull this up on the right, uh, so in Visual Studio, if you always keep your properties windows open, you will already have this. I generally keep it collapsed because of what I'm doing. I don't really need it. It's a little confusing. If I go have this open now, this properties panel, and press on installer, you'll notice that this all changed, right? That's different than me going to right click and going to properties. When I do that, I get this pop up. So just a reminder, you want the properties window. It makes it kind of tricky to find, but this is where we're going to have a lot of things to configure. You can see that the manufacturer, that's something that we saw. So we have author, manufacturer. So I could say uh, dev leader up here. I could go ahead and say that the manufacturer is also dev leader uh, LLC or something like that. We could put a description. This is the coolest. Let's see what else we have. Install for all users. So you can make this uh, change by default. I want that on, let's say. What else do we have? Product name here. So uh, coolest app, we're gonna call it. And what else? You can add like support stuff here. So maybe I would say my website here and a phone number I'm not gonna put in and title. I'm gonna probably wanna put coolest app installer. And you can have a version as well, right? So there's a bunch of different settings that you can consider. Manufacturer, so maybe I'll change up the URL here. I'm gonna put support here and then the manufacturer URL, I would do like that. Okay, so, but these are things that you're going to want to tweak and tune for whatever you need. Uh, I'm not here to tell you, you know, the right way, but I just want to show you that this is where you can modify stuff. So if I go ahead and build that now, we'll get that. Um, I want to call out before I go ahead and install this one that the executable that we have put into the output directory may still not look like how you want. And that's going to be because the way we set this up is that it's taking the contents of the publish output and just dropping them in. But that means if you don't want your applications executable to be called installer tutorial .wpf -app .exe, you're going to want to change this project instead. Okay, so we would go up to the properties here. So if I right click, go to properties, this is where you would want to change it. You could go ahead and make the assembly name uh, not be the project name, right? So I could call it coolest app here, right? So one word coolest app. If I go ahead and do that now, instead of saying installer tutorial .wpf app, the executable that goes into the bin directory will be named as such. So let's go ahead, we're going to rebuild this. Now, if we go back to the file explorer, if we have the setup files here, I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay, so 
This is already looking way better. It's super cool, right? Coolest app, if you will. So welcome to the coolest app setup wizard. This installer will guide you through uh, required steps to install coolest app on your computer. Heck yeah. Now, if we notice the folder, it says Dev Leader LLC, right? So the manufacturer name and then coolest app. So again, this is working just like how we want. I did have by default, it's going to be installed for everyone. That was, if I go back over to Visual Studio, you see install all users is set to true. So that's the new default. So we'll go ahead and press next. I'm gonna go ahead and install this once more, very fast this time. If I look on my computer and I have this pulled up here, I can go to program files, dev leader, LLC, coolest app. And you'll notice because I went and changed the WPF apps, output file to be coolest app again no space right so i wanted to show you with a space is where it's installed the folder but no space for the assembly name just so you can see where the settings are actually configured but again we can go run this and it should work we were able to successfully add a WPF app. You could have started with one that you already have. We use the publish output directory in our installer, and then we were able to go configure the installer properties to have a better manufacturer name, things like your actual output that you want named properly. So your folder path looks right, and then your actual assembly looks right as well. One final thing we should double check is if we go over to this MSI, if we were to go to properties, we should be able to see that if we go through the details here, some of the other things that we configured, right? The title, so coolest app installer. This is something else that we configured. And then in the comments, I said, this is the coolest. That actually came from the description all the way on the right here you see in Visual Studio. These are how you configure some of these things. Yes, people are still building desktop applications. And if you were looking for building an installer for your app, I hope that you found this helpful. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.